Vidal test. Vidal test is used in the diagnosis of enteric fever, that is, typhoid and paratyphoid fever, caused by Salmonella typhi and Salmonella paratyphi A and B respectively. Antibodies specific to flagellar antigen H and somatic antigen O of Salmonella species usually become detectable in blood seven days after the onset of infection in individuals infected with typhoid bacilli. This test facilitates quantitative estimation of antibodies to Salmonella antigens in human serum by slide and tube agglutination test. Principle When the colored, smooth, attenuated antigen suspensions are mixed and incubated with patient serum, anti-Salmonella antibodies present in the patient serum react with the antigen suspensions to give agglutination. Agglutination is a positive test result indicating presence of anti-Salmonella antibodies in the patient serum. Negative test result is indicated by the absence of agglutination. Primary sample. No special preparation of the patient is required prior to sample collection by approved techniques. Collect 2 milliliters of venous blood in a plain red-topped vacutainer. Do not use hemolyzed and turbid samples. Though freshly collected serum is preferable, samples can be stored at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade for up to 72 hours in case of delay in testing. Reagents and consumables Salmonella typhi O antigen suspension Salmonella typhi H antigen suspension Salmonella paratyphi AH antigen suspension Salmonella paratyphi BH antigen suspension Polyspecific positive control Glass slide with six reaction circles Applicator sticks Equipment Incubator Timer 0.1 ml and 1 ml serological pipettes and droppers 36 Vidal tubes or count tubes for each sample Physiological saline Test tube rack Test procedure Bring reagents and samples to room temperature before testing Shake and mix antigens well before dispensing Slight screen method Place one drop of positive control onto a reaction circle of the glass slide. Place 50 microliters of physiological saline onto the next reaction circle of the glass slide. Place one drop of patient serum to be tested onto each of the required number of reaction circles. Add one drop of O antigen suspension to the reaction circles containing positive control and physiological saline. Add one drop each of the antigen suspensions that is O, H, AH and BH to the reaction circles containing the patient's serum. Mix contents of each circle uniformly over the entire circle with separate mixing sticks. Rock the slide gently back and forth and observe for agglutination macroscopically at one minute. Interpretation of results Observe for agglutination or formation of clumps in the wells. Compare it with the positive control. Agglutination is a positive test result and indicates presence of the corresponding antibody in the patient's serum. Absence of agglutination is a negative test result and indicates that the corresponding antibody is not present in the patient's serum. As the test wells show, agglutination with O and AH antigens, the corresponding antibodies, namely Salmonella paratyphi O and H antibodies, are present in the patient's serum. Hence, the infecting organism is Salmonella paratyphi A. Slight semi-quantitative method. This method is recommended for obtaining quick approximate titers only for the antigens that tested positive in the slight screening test. Using a pipette, place 80 microliters, 40 microliters, 20 microliters, 10 microliter and 5 microliter 
of patient serum to be tested on five different reaction circles on the glass slide. The corresponding dilutions obtained will be 1 in 20, 1 in 40, 1 in 80, 1 in 160 and 1 in 320 respectively. Add to each reaction circle a drop of the antigen which showed agglutination with the test sample in the screening method. In our demonstration, it will be O and AH antigens. Using separate mixing sticks, mix the contents of each circle uniformly over the reaction circles. Rock the slide gently back and forth. Observe for agglutination macroscopically within one minute. Interpretation of result. Agglutination is a positive test result. The titer is reported as a reciprocal of the highest dilution which shows a positive test result. Quantitative tube method. Take appropriate number of sets, one set for each antigen suspension of eight count tubes or test tubes and label them one to eight. Pipette, 1 1.9 milliliters of physiological saline into tube number one of all sets to each of the remaining tubes that is 2 to 8 add 1 milliliters of physiological saline to tube number 1 of all sets add 0.1 milliliters of serum sample to be tested and mix well transfer 1 milliliters of the diluted serum sample from tube number 1 to tube number 2 and mix well transfer 1 milliliter of the dilute serum sample from tube number 2 to tube number 3 and mix well. Continue the serial dilution till tube number 7 in each set. Discard 1 ml of the diluted serum from tube number 7 of each set. Now, the dilutions of the serum sample achieved from tube number 1 to 7 respectively in each set is as follows. 1 is to 10. 1 is to 20, 1 is to 40, 1 is to 80, 1 is to 160, 1 is to 320, 1 is to 640. Tube number 8 in all the sets serves as a saline control. To all the tubes, that is, 1 to 8 of each set, add one drop of the respective well-mixed antigen suspensions from the reagent vials and mix well. Cover and incubate overnight at 37 degrees centigrade. After incubation, dislodge the sedimented button gently and observe for agglutination. Interpretation of result. The tube test measures the titer of antibodies present in the patient serum. Titer is defined as the concentration of an antibody determined by finding the highest dilution of serum at which it is still able to cause agglutination of the antigen. If the highest dilution of serum is 1 is to X, then the titer of the antibody will be reported as X. In this test sample, the highest dilution at which agglutination is visible is 1 is to 80 for O antigen and 1 is to 160 for AH antigen. No agglutination is observed with H and BH antigens. Hence, the patient suffers from Salmonella typhi infection with anti-O antibody titer of 80 and anti-AH antibody titer of 160. Titers of TO, TH, AH and BH above 1 is to 80 and above are taken as diagnostically significant. However, the diagnosis should be confirmed with positive cultures, rapid tests, clinical presentation and other laboratory tests. Safety precautions. Handle all samples as potentially infectious. Handle all reagents with care and avoid contact with eye, mouth and skin. Do not perform mouth pipetting. Discard used reagents and samples as per biomedical waste disposal guidelines followed in your healthcare setting. Potential sources of variability. Shake the antigenic suspensions well before use and ensure the suspension is homogeneous. A moderate rise in titer of all three H agglutinins occurring simultaneously 
against all three H antigens is suggestive of recent typhoid and paratyphoid vaccination. Antibiotic treatment prevents a rise in titer. A negative result cannot rule out typhoid fever if the sample has been taken very early in the course of illness, that is, earlier than seven days from the onset of infection. This is because antibodies have still not reached the detectable limit during this period. Diagnosis of typhoid fever can be more definitively established from increasing titers of H and O antibodies in successive tests rather than from a single test result of H and O titers.